Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scarecrow over here bringing you another Minecraft path to build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building USS California CGN 36. The USS California CGN 36 is a lead ship of the California class of nuclear powered guided missile cruisers. This was the sixth warship of the United States Navy to be named for the state of California. USS California and her sister ship USS South Carolina were equipped with two single armed Mark 13 launchers fore and aft for the standard missile. One ASROC missile launcher and two Mark 141 launchers for the Harpoon missiles. These cruisers were equipped with two 5 inch 54 caliber Mark 45 guns rapid fire cannons fore and aft. The two cruisers also had a unique arrangement after their superstructure with a flight deck and lowerable safety fences. Both cruisers also had full suites of anti submarine warfare equipment. Thus, these warships were designed to combat all threats in the air, on the surface, and underwater. The USS California in particular was ordered in 1968, it was laid down in 1970, and was launched in September of 1971. It uh, was later uh, decommissioned in July 9th, 1999. So overall, really interesting cruiser and kind of the um, experimental phase of the United States Navy with trying to create nuclear-powered uh, small warships. Obviously, this didn't really uh, pan out too well as the this Navy decided to go ahead and continue to go with conventional powered um, ships and leaving the nuclear powered really only to the uh, large aircraft carriers, which I guess in a way does make sense. Overall, really cool looking ship and should be a fun one to add if you're looking for a kind of a nice, um, I would say mostly Cold War um, cruiser for your uh, United States military fleets. Uh, with uh, that all out of the way though, before we go ahead and take a look at the build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost for, push for making this tutorial possible. As always, if you're interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and play the small monetary channel every month. And in doing so, earn a view request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It is really appreciated, so again, feel free to check that out. Again, link is in the video description. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to taking a look at the USS California. So getting started with here, we have uh, basically the bow of the ship here. Um, nothing too crazy going on here. Pretty standard bow. We do have the missile launcher located here. And then we have the first uh, five inch gun um, right behind it. As we progress for the back, we have the conning tower here, or I would say the superstructure, I guess is the best way to describe this with the bridge, all the communication, radar equipment, all that kind of stuff on the top here. This mid deck section, we have a, another missile launcher located in this section, as well as some lifeboats. Uh, continuing on further, we have our uh, second mast on the rear here. Again, some more um, equipment and stuff like that for it. Uh, some lifeboats mount on the side of the ship as well. And we then have our 5 inch gun located on the back here, as well as our missile launcher and our landing pad on the back. Very interesting about this uh, ship is it doesn't seem to actually have a um, hangar deck to actually store the helicopter, so kind of an interesting design, I guess, um, in of not having that uh, little hangar deck on the ship, but overall pretty interesting nonetheless. With that though, that's pretty much uh, it for this overview for the ship. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial, but begin with our first layer, layer number one. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer one. Now, a few quick things I want to mention before we go ahead and jump into really doing the full tutorial for this build is first off, um, if you are completely new to my tutorials, the way I like to structure the first few layers here of this build is going to be doing half on half off. What this means is we're built the center line on camera and the entire right side will be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over the left side. The ship is uh, symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be done to the other. Just make sure you're paying close attention to what, what is going where. Um, also, to make sure that we build this ship correctly, we do want to make sure that we build this properly sitting in the water. I imagine most of you guys will want to build this in the water, so to make sure that you have layer 1 sitting properly, you can see the row of blue concrete here represents our water level. You can see here layer 1 sits one block beneath that, so directly underneath that first layer of water. So make sure that that is correct, very important, because your ship will not sit properly if you're not positioned it correctly in the water. Once you have that squared away though, we can go ahead and jump into the tutorial. So to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down two red concrete blocks. Now coming off the red concrete block going forward, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. And then going ahead and going back from this, these two red concrete blocks, if you're on Java, we can place down two upside down pistons. Now if you're not on Java, instead of the two pistons here, I would instead place down um, some, maybe a 
brick upside down stair, so kind of like this, and then a brick top slab, um, or just two brick top slabs, either one way will work. We have a special tool on Java where you can actually get rid of the top of the portion or of the uh, pistons there, as you can see. So it kind of helps with the sloping here for this front little uh, bulbous bell. But again, not a super important detail, especially if it's underwater, so you can use full blocks instead. Um, after that's done, we're going to go to the side here of the red concrete blocks. We're going to place down two of these acacia wood trap doors, as well as two acacia wood signs on the side here of the pistons. Like that, if you place down the stair or the top slab, don't place down the signs. After that, though, we're going to then go back from these two blocks here with a row of uh, top slabs of brick. This is going to go back a total of 26 blocks in length. So 26 top slabs going down the side here after these two blocks here, whether they be two top slabs, two sta or one stair and a top slab, or the two pistons. After that's done, we're going to then count back from this uh, top slab here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and our seventh top slab here. We're going to place down a brick top slab out to the side. And we're going to then go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 brick top slabs for uh, the side row there. Once you have that all done there, you're going to go and take what we did on the right side here, flip it over to the left side, make sure you take your acacia wood signs, transform over those um, trap doors, and this row of top slabs. But basically, with layer 1 complete, this is what you should have for the top down view. Pretty simple, straightforward layer. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number 2. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, we're going to start off by placing down a red stained glass pane on top of this red concrete block, and we're going to go and then take our red concrete and place down a row going all the way down the center for a total of 30. Then we're going to follow this up with two brick top slabs, and then a acacia wood trap door there on the very end of that center row, and that's going to complete our center line. Moving out to the sides here, we're going to start off by going ahead and going back to our fourth red concrete block from, there from the front. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane at the side, one more glass pane back, two brick walls, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 of these red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick upside down stair, a acacia wood fence gate, and then we're going to place down two end rods. If you do not have access to, or if you're not able to place down the end rods in the water, you can go ahead and place down fence gates that go all the way back of acacia wood, but uh, end rods here, again, are going to be your best option. Uh, we're going to go then place down a birch wood uh, slab here. Um, also, instead of the end rods, you can also use chains. I do believe chains can be placed in the water as well, so those are also a good alternative instead of the um, end rods. Anyways, so though, after those uh, birch slabs, we're going to go and then place down a red stained glass pane, and then a brick wall going back like so. Once we have that all done there, we want to go ahead and count from the back here. We're going to go ahead and count from the stair, this red concrete block. So we have one, two, and then we have our third red concrete block. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane at the side. We're going to go forward from it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 additional red stained glass panes forward. And that right there is going to finish what you have there. Take a look at it from above. Once you transfer the right side over to the left side, this is what you should have for the aerial view. And that right there will conclude layer number two of the build. With that all complete, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this red stained glass pane here. And we want to go and then go back from the stone block, an additional row of stone, uh, or stone basically all the way back to this, uh, this acacia wood trap door on the back here, which should be a total of 33 and 34 if we count the first block. So uh, basically 34 blocks in total going all the way down for the red stained glass pane, all the way back to this acacia wood trap door. After that, go ahead and go into the sides. We're going to go and grab ourselves some light gray stingless paint. Starting off on our front here, we're going to go and count back one, two, three, and our fourth stone block. We're going to place down a light gray stingless paint, followed by a second one, then two inside walls. And then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and twenty-six stone blocks back. Gonna go and double check the count here, and it is gonna be 26 blocks in length back from that acacia wood, or the, sorry, that um, inside wall there in the front. After that, we're gonna go ahead and also place down a light gray stainless paint here in the corner to go ahead and finish that off on the back there. With that done, going back up to the front, we're gonna count back to from or count on the side of this row one, two, three, and our fourth um, stone block. We're gonna place down a light gray stainless paint to the side, followed by an additional three more backs, so you have a total of four. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these walls back, and then one, two, three, and four after that. Lastly, we're going to go on the back here. We're going to go, and go to this second and third from last stone blocks. We're going to place down two iron bars to the side there, like that. And you'll basically just take that to both sides and taking a look at it from above here. This way, you should have for the top-down view. 
with that all complete, that's going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number uh, three. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer four here. Layer four will be the last layer. We will be doing half on, half off. After this layer, we will be going ahead and doing everything all together now. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump into layer four. It's going to be the last layer here for our hull. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone block that's going to go on top of this stone block here up here on the front, and we're going to place down a light gray stainless paint going off of it toward the front. We then want to go ahead and build back from the stone block. One, two. So you have a total of three stone blocks here. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of four of the gray wool, then a white wool block, and then we're going to place down a long row of gray wool. This is going to pretty much run all the way to the back of the ship here for a total of 25. On the very last stone block here on the end, we're going to place down another stone block on top of that. After that's done, going back up to the front, we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a white stained glass pane coming off the side here of the stone block, as well as a light gray stained glass pane going back from that glass pane. We're going to go ahead and place down two andesite walls, then one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen stone blocks. So I'm just going to double check my count here, and it's going to be fourteen blocks in length. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four gray wool. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stone blocks, and then a light gray stainless pane here. Coming off the uh, stone block here on the side, we're going to place down a uh, birchwood button like so, and we then want to go ahead and go to our one, two, three, and our fourth stone block from the end. We're going to place down a light gray stainless pane uh, like so to the side, followed by one, two, three, more going forward. Then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, and 14, and the set walls, and then 1, 2, 3, like racing was pains, going forward like that. With that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number 4. Take a look at it from up above, as we should have for the top-down view, and at this point in time, we're going to be going ahead and now going up into layer 5, which will begin our superstructure work. So with that, let's move on up to layer number 5. Moving into our next layer, we have layer 5. As I mentioned before, layer 5 here is going to be the layer where we start to do everything all together. As we start to get into a lot of the details and stuff like that, it's kind of easier to do it um, like this, in this format. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive into it. To begin with, we're going to place down a stone stair that's going to go on top of this glass pane up here in the front, followed by a stone brick slab back from that. On both sides of the stone stair, we're going to go ahead and place down a um, birchwood trap door, and then on top of the uh, stone block, we're going to place down, or the stone stair, we're going to place down an end rod. So, just like that. We're going to go and then place down a row two of daylight detectors back, we're going to turn these to the night mode, as well as a iron trap door here, and then a end rod, like so. Now, if you're on Java, we'll place down an iron bar on top of the end rod, like so, for right now. If you are not on Java, we will use a cobweb. So, cobweb here is a good alternative to the iron bar. But again, for Java players, for the time being, we'll very simply just place down an iron bar right here on top of this um, end rod for the time being. We're going to go then skip a space back from this, so we're going to skip this space and then place down a stone brick stair right before this white uh, wool block. And we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the back of that stair going forward. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a stone brick wall. We're going to place down a stone brick wall here, and then we're going to go and place down an end rod coming off that stone brick wall like so. A alternative to the stone brick wall is to also use a stone brick stair. This one would be facing like that. Um, however, again, this stone brick wall here is going to be the best, uh, especially for Java players where we can use a, some modifications to make the wall look a little bit better and make it look more like the 5 inch gun. So we're going to leave it as it is for right now and we'll be returning that a little bit later. Also on the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray carpet on top of this wall and we're going to go back uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, like this, so you have a total of five. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. When that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pistons. We're gonna place down a row of three of pist or yeah, row three of pistons across. Again, if you were not on Java, I would instead of placing that those pistons, I would probably place down maybe um, slabs or something of that sort instead. Some stone slabs would work. Uh, but yeah, don't place down the pistons if you're not on Java. After that, we're gonna go ahead and place down a gray carpet on both ends there, and then we're gonna go ahead and then place down a anvil. In the very center like so. We're going to go and then take our stone blocks. We're going to place on our row of three of stone blocks across. This can be followed up with an andesite wall on both ends like so. We then want to place down a birchwood fence gate on both sides. And we're going to open this fence gate toward the inside of the ship there. And then a row of three of stone blocks across the center. We're going to place down a second row. Or sorry, this will be actually a third row of three. Then a fourth row. Five. And six rows of three along the side. We're going to grab our light gray stainless paints and we're going to place down one, two, and three. 
and one, two, and three, going back from that fence gate. And then we're just going to place down a gray carpet on top of this wall here. We're going to place down a uh, gray wool block here in the center, like gray stain was painted both sides. And then we're going to go and take our stone full blocks and place down a row of three of stone full blocks. Coming off the glass pane here, we're going to place down a gray carpet to both sides. And also underneath this glass pane, we can replace that stone block with a gray wool block just to kind of keep that top deck uh, color a little bit more consistent there. After that's all done, we're going to take our stone blocks here. We're going to place down a second row of three here, then a third row, and then a fourth row. After we have that done, actually, we're going to go ahead and change this real quick. We're going to have that first row of three, but these are actually going to be um, three light gray stainless panes here on the sides there. So it's actually going to look like that there, so my bad. Um, we're going to go then grab ourselves some end rods and also some light gray beds. We're going to place down an end rod here, and then we're going to place down our gray bed, and then the end rod here. Same thing over here like so, on both sides there for our life rafts, or our boats, I should say. We're going to go then place down a narrow stone block here in the center, this time followed with a andesite wall to both sides. We'll resume our gray carpet on the walls here to the sides, like so. We're going to go then place down a row of three of stone blocks across, a gray carpet on both ends, and we then want to go ahead and place down a row of three of light gray stained glass panes across, like so. We'll swap out the um, stone underneath these glass panes here for gray wool, um, on the sides there, so it should look like this going all the way across. We're going to go then take our gray carpet, we're going to place down a row of three across this section here, and we then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair, like so, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the back of the stair. To the sides here of the skeleton skull and the stair, we're going to place down gray carpet. We then want to place down two rows of three going across, and then at this point, we're going to go and grab white carpet, we're going to place down a row of three of white carpet, then one back on the sides, and then a narrow row of three across, a gray carpet there in the center, and then a narrow gray carpet here on the back, stone block. We then can take our end rods, or rather, sorry, our iron bars, we're going to place down one and two, going up from this glass pane on the left side there, and the left side only. With that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there to do for uh, layer number five. As you can see, probably our longest layer here is we do have a lot of laying out we're doing here uh, for the superstructure and all that stuff, but this is again what it should look like from the top down view. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer 5, and let's move on up to layer number 6. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take our stone blocks and place down a row of 3 across the top here. We're going to then go to both ends, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull. After that, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some item frames. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3 item frames across the front there. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves some black concrete, and we're going to place it on the, in the middle. Uh, item frame and then we're going to go and then grab ourselves some black beds and we're going to place down black beds to the sides here in these item frames and we'll rotate these so that they are sideways and the pillows are facing toward the middle. We'll go ahead and then place down a row of birchwood signs that's going to go across the front here and this is going to be for Java players only. On Java you can place down item frames and signs in the same block space. If you're not on Java then you'll have to go ahead and just place down the item frames and uh, disregard the signs there. But yeah that's going to be our front bridge right there for the ship. After that's all done, we're going to take our stone blocks and we're going to place down a narrow row of three across, followed by a third row, then a fourth row, and then a fifth row. So you have five rows of three in total going across here. We're going to go and then grab ourselves a stone slab. We're going to place down a stone slab to both ends. So right after that skeleton skull. And this is going to have a birchwood sign on the side of that slab. Again, on both sides here. After that's all done, we want to go and then place down a birchwood fence gate. And this is going to have a birchwood sign on the side of it as well. Again, same thing over here, like so. Then uh, we want to go ahead and place down two light gray stainless panes going back. On the sides of these glass panes, we're going to place down item frames. And in those item frames, we're going to place down white beds for life rafts. So that, again, will be done on both sides here. Then also, again, for Java players, we'll place down our birchwood signs that go across like so. And we're also going to place down our birchwood sign here, coming off this glass pane like that. After that's all done, we're going to place down a stone brick stair facing destruction like so for another rocket launcher here in the midship, and then a gray carpet to both sides. We then want to go ahead and place down a quartz slab on top of these two, um, these two uh, glass panes here, again for some life rafts. We're going to place down our stone block here in the center, and then this is going to be a light gray stainless pane to both ends. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three more stone blocks down the center, and again, uh, glass panes along the side there of those three blocks. 
We then want to place down a end rod. It's going to go on top of these um, these end rods here. And then we're just going to place down another light gray bed on top of those end rods. And just so I don't forget to do it also, we can go ahead and grab ourselves some string. So it might be better if I actually search for this. So uh, we can use string here to kind of show a little bit of the rigging here for the lifeboats. And we can kind of place it down on top of the um, end rods and on top of the beds here. Like this going all the way across. So if you kind of get up close, you can see this the little string there, like the rigging here for the you know boat launcher and all that stuff. So uh, just a fun little thing I like to add there, just to get that little bit of detail to kind of get in close, you'll be able to see. After that though, we're gonna go and then place down a piston right here. If you do not have access to a debug stick instead of the piston, we will be using a um, you can use a stair instead. Um, that would probably work pretty good, I would say, for like a stone stair. Um, I don't think I have one on hand here, so let me go and grab one real quick. You just kind of show what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, instead of the piston, you can do a stone stair there instead. But again, piston here is going to be your best bet. After that, though, uh, whatever you use for the front up here for this gun, whether it's a stair or a stone brick wall, we're going to place down another stone brick wall here, and then an end rod going back, or a stair, again, just depends on what you used. We'll then take our gray carpet. We're going to place down a gray carpet here, also on top of that inside wall, and we'll just do that on both sides there like so. With uh, that all complete, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number six. And with that, we'll probably move into our final layers and um, finish off the uh, USS California. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers here, we have layers seven through 14. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater on top of these two stone blocks here on over the bridge section there. Uh, we're going to separate the notches like so from each other. And then a skeleton skull directly there in the center. Going back from that skeleton skull, we're going to place down a grindstone, and we're going to follow this up with the inner skeleton skull like this on top of these stone blocks, preferably having the face face toward the grindstone. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down another stone block here in the center, a stone brick slab to both sides, and we want to go ahead and place down our piston here in the center, again followed by a stone brick slab to both sides, a narrow stone block in the center, and a narrow stone brick slab to the sides. We're going to go ahead and take our birchwood signs, we're going to place them along these two stone brick slabs. And we're going to go then place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of this slab here. And we then want to go and place down birchwood signs on the sides of these two slabs like that. And we can also place it on the side of this stone block as well. Um, again, a good alternative to the piston would probably just be a place down a stone brick slab. Unfortunately, there isn't really any good options for that. So again, stone brick slab, there's probably your best bet. With that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab our iron bars. We're going to go and go up from these skeleton skulls on the sides of the bridge there, a total of three like so. Then on top here of this stone block, we're going to place down a grindstone. After we have that done, we're going to then place down a stone brick wall. And on top of that, we're going to place down a stone block. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull, both sides of the stone block, and then a birchwood sign on the sides of that stone block. Then going up from that, we're going to place down a row of three of iron bars. Then a second row of three, going up like so. And we then want to place down a birchwood fence gate, Coming off this center iron bar, we're going to open it up toward the iron bar like that. And we're going to go then place down an end rod on top of that fence gate. After that, we're going to place down a stone brick stair, followed by another end rod. And we're going to go then place down a skeleton skull on top of that iron or that end rod, just like that. And uh, that right there will basically form your first mass. Then moving to the back section here, we're going to place down a piston on this section here. Again, instead of a piston, you can place down a stone brick slab. Then we're going to place down a stone full block, and then an inside wall going back from that stone full block. Going up from the stone full block, we're going to place down a stone brick wall, followed by another stone full block. Skeleton skull on both sides of the stone full block, as well as a uh, birchwood sign to the sides there. After that is all done there, we're going to go and then place down a row of three of iron bars across an end rod or two end rods on top of the skeleton skull toward the inside here and on top of that we're just going to place down an iron trap door like so we're also going to go ahead and continue back placing down a grindstone on top of this stone block and then grabbing our iron bars we're going to place down a row of three that go up from this piston so one two and three that go up just like that and after that's all done there uh the last one of the last things we're going to do here is we're also going to place down a diet wall on both sides of this um or on both sides of this piston right there or on top of those two like racing us paints now at this point in time we're going to go ahead and basically transition to features for java players to kind of go ahead and modify the ship to 
make it a lot nicer, a lot nicer detailed. So for Java players, we're gonna go and type in the command slash give app p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And by pressing enter, we'll get this uh, stick here. What we can do here is we can first go to our pistons. We're gonna left click the pistons until we get selected. It can send a false prompt to pop up on screen. By right clicking, we can actually get rid of that wood portion and it really helps with the sloping there of our sides. So it really helps the sloping and kind of, uh, you know, basically just the look of things. So you can see here, we're just gonna go and do this to each one of the pistons that we placed, again, for Java players. And basically that'll look something like that. So you can see it just kind of helps improve the overall shaping. Next thing we're gonna cover is the guns here. So we use stone brick walls for the guns and for Java players, we can actually change the properties of the walls to actually con have the walls fit or connect up in directions even though they normally wouldn't. We could do this by simply looking in the direction that we wanna have the wall go. For me, it's gonna be self. And we're gonna go ahead and left click the wall until we get selected self. And we're gonna go ahead and set this to south to low. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to the opposite direction, which for me would be north. And we're gonna go ahead and right or left click this again until we get selected north. And then by right clicking it, we wanna set it north to tall. So it should sit like so. And we're gonna go ahead and basically do the same thing here for the back one, except this time, north here is gonna be the low one and then south is gonna be the tall one. So it's gonna look like that on the back. So you'll do that for those five inch guns there on both ends. The next thing also we can do is we can go ahead and kind of work on our phalanx system here a little bit better. So instead of having just these walls, we can actually go ahead and make these look a little bit nicer. We'll have to get rid of this one string here, which really isn't that big of a deal, but we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll grab our blocks here. We're gonna place down a block with one block of space between the wall and the block. And we'll do this on both sides. We're gonna place down a tripwire hook here on the side of this block. Using our debug stick here, we're gonna go ahead and left click the uh, trip bar hook until we get selected facing pop up. We'll right click until it rotates around and connects up to the um, wall. So just like that on both sides there. And once you have that done, that will complete all of the little uh, things that we can do with the debug sticks there. So kind of a nice little tool, gets us a little bit more detail and kind of a little bit more of an accurate looking ship. But anyways, that right there is gonna conclude my tutorial here for the USS California CGN 36. And with that, hope you guys do enjoy this um, nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser. Um, with that, again, if you do end up using this design, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This will be linked from a son that build to my channel or this video if this does appreciate social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for your free user for a project you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun with it, all that fun stuff. Again, big special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, if you're interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.